So welcome to this series on building a shopping cart with PHP. We're going to take this video to take a look at the entire checkout flow from adding an item to changing and updating quantities, deleting items. We're going to take a look in the database as well, a little bit about what's going on. And of course, we're going to make a payment and we're doing that with a Braintree integration. So let's start out just by taking a look at these products and um, we'll go ahead and look in the database and see what kind of things we have available here. So this is just the home page and it's a list of the products we have. Uh, of course you can replace these product images with whatever else you want let's just look in the database and you can see here that we've obviously got a title we have a slug to just uniquely identify each one and we obviously have a description you can see all that over here and then we have a price which is really important we have an image to represent each one we have a stock level as well which will adjust when we check out so we'll see that happening in a bit and of course we have a created and updated that date so let's just start to add some products in and see what happens then. You'll notice that we have as well low or uh, out of stock indicators. So this one here happens to be low in stock. And of course, we can't add more to our cart than is actually in stock and we can protect against that. So let's just add a couple of items to our cart. This is our cart view. We'll just come back to this in a minute. So let's go over and add one of these. And why don't we go and add one of these as well? So they're all pretty low in stock, but of course it's up to you to adjust the stock levels. So here we can go and actually update the quantity based on how many we actually have in stock. So in this case, we only have two in stock. And you can see here that the price updates to reflect these. These are six pounds each and uh, they are coming up at 12 because I've selected two of them. And of course, what we can do is we can remove them as well. So if we wanted to remove this item, we just go ahead and update that. So pretty straightforward. And on the right here, we have a cart summary. So we have a subtotal, we have a shipping cost, and then we have a total. So this is the amount that the customer will actually pay. And of course, if you've already noticed up in the right hand corner here, we have a, a little icon to get back to our cart, a little text to get back to our cart. And this will also tell us how many items we have in our cart. OK, so now once we're ready to check out, once the user's ready to check out, we come over to the order page and you can see here that we've got payments loaded down here with Braintree. We're just going to go and fill out our details and then we're going to take a look in the database. So let's just go over and enter some information here. So we'll enter a name and an email address. What this part will do it will actually create a customer with an address attached to that customer. So when they check out again, we're not storing their information over and over again. And of course, we'll see this happen. So we're going to enter a, an address. So one course place. And we'll just literally make this up. So come down here and enter this details. And of course, now we have the option to either pay by card, PayPal, or anything else that you integrate with Braintree. So if you want to uh, integrate maybe Bitcoin or anything else, you can go ahead and do that afterwards. But we've just chosen here to use PayPal or our card. So with the PayPal integration, then we just see the following pop up. And of course, at the moment, we're using a sandbox. We're not actually making real payments in development. You're going to use Braintree sandbox, and we're going to cover that in the next video. But for now, what we can do is just proceed with the, the sandbox box payment and this goes ahead and gives us our PayPal which is obviously just a, a fake account here. Now we can also change our payment method so we can go and add a new payment method here so we can switch back over to card so let's just go and enter a test card within Braintree and a test uh, expiry and CVV and let's just go and enter a uh, postal code as well and then we go ahead and add this and there we go so we're now using a visa ending in 4.2. So now that we've got all this information in here, as long as we don't mess anything up in here, we do have validation on here as well. And of course, this uh, UI drop in with Braintree does actually validate the details we're entering as well. We can go ahead and place our order. So we'll be charged $34.50. So I actually have my Braintree sandbox up here that we can test on. Uh, today, I haven't taken any payments. So we'll see this uh, increase to $34.50 in just a moment. So let's place the order and wait for this to go through. And there we go. So really quick, really straightforward. And we now have an order confirmation page. So you can see here that we have uh, two of these items here. We have the shipping and the order total. So the order total here doesn't actually uh, include the shipping. So I'll correct that before we start working on it. So now that we've done that, that is the whole checkout 
process in the shopping cart from start to finish. Let's just check Braintree out and we can either do this on the dashboard, which will give us a nice overview of the payments that we've taken uh, over time. So over 30 days, you can see here that we have actually taken that payment. And of course, if we go over to our transactions tab, we can see a better view of this. So we can uh, basically filter this down. But of course, at the moment, we're in this month by default. So we can just hit search. And you can see here that we do in fact have a payment here for £34.50 and uh, we can click in here just to view more information. Either way, we know the payment is coming through to our sandbox uh, with Braintree. So now that we've done this, you can notice we have this long order ID here. We're going to be creating that so the user can refer back to it. What you might want to do is after you're finished with the series, you might want to integrate email so you can actually email the user very straightforward. Since we're going to be using the Slim 3 framework, we have videos on how to do that. So you can email the user with this and you can go ahead and link them back up to their order. And of course, it shows the items here. They can click through and order more if they want. So the other interesting thing is uh, what's happened here. If you keep an eye on the stock levels, we've got 5, 10, 2, 4 and 1 they will have actually reduced. So we now have 4, 10, 0, 4, and 1. So this item here, Blake Espresso, is actually now out of stock. So no one can order this uh, anymore until we increase the quantity of our stock. So why don't we just finish this off by taking a look around the database and seeing what kind of things have been created. So the first thing is the customers. You can see here, this just contains my name and my email address. And of course I have now a customer ID. Over in addresses, you can see that my address has been stored as well. Now we don't have a direct link between the customer and the address, but what we do have is an orders table. Now, if you look across here, you can see that we've got that hash that we spoke about earlier. We have a order total, and of course that's plus the shipping. And then we have an address ID, whether it's been actually paid for or not, because when we actually click through to our order form, we will wait for it to be paid. And then we have a customer ID as well. So really helpful to see all this information in here. And of course you can add a lot more or create any more advanced relationships if you want to. Now, what we also don't have in here is the products that the user has ordered. How will we know what to ship to the user? Well, of course, over in order products, this is a table that relates an order to a particular product. And then, of course, includes the quantity as well. So what you can do is if you were to build some kind of admin panel for this, you can go through and uh, actually see which products have been uh, ordered as part of an order. So of course also we have a payments table. What's going to happen here is it's going to relate to an order ID and it's going to give you the Braintree transaction ID. So when we finally get around to integrating Braintree, you'll see that from the response we get back, we'll have a transaction ID. And we're going to store that there just so we can easily refer over on Braintree if we need to find more information about a transaction or anything like that. So you can see here that once we do a search, this one here matches up to this transaction here. Now, if for any reason the payment fails, perhaps the user's card is declined, uh, obviously this won't happen and we will have failed set to one. So we'll know whether their uh, payment has actually failed. So that is pretty much it. From what you've seen, you can very easily build onto this. We're going to be using Slim 3 as our base framework. We're going to be setting everything up really nicely. So if you do want to add to this in the future, it's going to be really simple to do. I want to give a huge shout out to our friends at Braintree Payments. By next year, maybe even next week, there could be a whole new way to pay. Maybe it will be the next Bitcoin, the next Apple Pay, or maybe even both. Fortunately, Braintree's full stack payment platform is easily adaptable to whatever the future holds, so you can easily adapt too. Accept anything from pounds to PayPal to the next big innovation from any device with a really simple integration. And when that new payment method comes out, all you'll have to do is update a few lines of code. No late nights, no complicated recoding, no stress about staying ahead of the curve. Braintree Payments is here to help. You can learn more at braintreepayments.com slash codecourse.